Hello, hello, hello. My name is Chad, and welcome to the second tutorial in my StarCraft 2 map editing series. This tutorial will cover a lot of the minor points on creating a map. Like in Chapter 1, a lot of the content may seem extremely elementary. However, this tutorial aims to cover most aspects of map making, and the basics are no exception. So, to create a map, you simply go to this page with the turned corner, click the New button, and create a map. It's not hard. You've got a couple of types of documents, we're just going to choose map, a couple of types of dependencies, melee, custom, and campaign. We're going to choose melee, which is a type of dependency which follows all the rules set out by Blizzard for a custom game of StarCraft. Sorry, not a custom, for a standard game of StarCraft. Custom is everything else, campaign, tower defense, or otherwise. You then have to choose the width and height of your map. Width, of course, being the horizontal direction, height being the vertical direction. I'm sure you learned this in primary school mathematics. Then we have our texture set. Blizzard's been kind enough to provide an array of various textures, all with their own unique looking colours. I'm going to choose Core Hole. And I'm going to make the entire ground concrete. Let's call it Core Hole Concrete. Hit OK then. So here we have our nice grey concrete Now, before we go any further, it'd be nice to know what this map's going to go and be called. Well, we can call it whatever we want, but we go to map, map info, and we'll call this a map. The author will be whoever's making it. A description, a short one, so something like free-for-all map, for example, or 1v1 and 2v2. It's a bit small to be a 2v2 map, but whatever. And then, a nice little description. Extended. For people with no time, but spare time, to read. Then we've got options. We'll ignore those for the time being. Bounds. This is an interesting little one. The blue line around the outside here, as you can see here on the actual view area, the texture editor, and here on the minimap, is the actual playable area. Units cannot move outside of this blue line when you test the map or even play the map once it's been published. So. In order to fix this, you can increase it by several units in size. I'm actually going to refer to this as a unit. You'll see later on what I mean by units. But a unit is a single black square. By increasing this, we now have a larger playable area, and the probe, or whatnot, can go further outside of the map. We can also change the texture should we want. Let's say now we, we actually want to be on Zill. Hit OK. And now we're on Zill. The entire texture set has changed entirely. We no longer have the core hole set that you may be familiar with with Metalopolis. And finally, a loading screen, a custom loading screen. It's entirely up to you whether you wish to have a custom loading screen or not. The way you, I search for a custom loading screen is I go to Browse, and I search for Loading. We've got Agria, Aya, Avernus, Belshir, Braxis, etc. Of course, you can just keep the default loading screen for this particular um, texture set, which for Zill 
is I don't know because I closed that last menu. The other thing is you can also choose a custom image. To set a custom loading screen, import, import files on desktop, Hello world.dds. It has to be a DDS style of image. This is one I prepared earlier. It says hi world. And we'll save the map now. We'll save it as hello world. And we'll close this. So map, loading screen, browse. Hello world.dds. OK. Now you will also notice that I actually set the image scaling to normal. There are three different types of scales, normal, stretched and aspect scaled. I'll show you what each of them look like right now. This is not scaled at all. So if your monitor is larger than this image, then you're going to get a nice big black box around the image. If your monitor is smaller than that image, and I hope for your sake it is not, then the image will actually be cut off slightly. Similarly, or not similarly, you can stretch it. Stretching the image will force it to cover the entire screen. regardless of what it will do to the image, whether it will make your face look like a letterbox. Or a lamppost. And finally, we have aspect scaled. This will resize the image without changing its ratio. So if it's a perfect square, when it resizes it, it will still be a perfect square even if your monitor is a rectangle. How it solves this problem is by doing what's known as letterboxing. In this case, vertical letterboxing, where there's black on either side. Finally, we're going to cover player properties. So this is currently a one-player map, and all maps are one-player maps by default. You have to increase the number of players. You do this by selecting the new player here. You'll notice that the control is set to none by default. Changing that to user will make this a two-player map. Similarly for three players and four players. Now I'm just going to add four starting locations real quickly here. For no reason whatsoever. Other than to show you that you can also force teams to be on certain sides. You know where all the four teams are. We're going to force this so that um, start locations 1 and 2 will always be together and start locations 3 and 4 will always be together. For example, start location 1 will always be linked with start location 2. Now you can see that start location 1 is linked with 2 and vice versa. Start location 3 will be linked with start location 4, and vice versa. There is also advanced team placements, as you can see here. I'm not going to worry about that one for the time being. Now to publish your map, file, publish, login, You can either have a major release, this is usually selected when your map is deemed ready to be played, or a minor release. I'm going to choose minor, and you can make it public or private. Private means it will only be available to be viewed by you and others if you add them to your game after you've hosted one. Whereas public, it can be played by absolutely anyone. Finally, you have to choose whether it's locked or unlocked. Locked means it will not be able to be edited by anyone else. 
unlocked means it will. As of that point, you should be able to publish your map. For some reason, I am not, but I'm not fussed about that. Oh, there we go. The published name, a map, is not available. So, unfortunately, I have picked a name for my map that is not available. Here, let me fix that for you right now. A, 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 a map. Save. File. Publish. Unlocked. And it will be a major revision. So 1.0 instead of 0.1. And it's done. Now to manage your published files, go to Manage Published. You'll make, need to be logged in. And we're just going to delete this map now. To remove it from your account, not very hard. That's all the basics there are to map creating and all I'm going to cover in this tutorial. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.